Good morning. Good morning. We are so glad you are here. Teresa, you could just keep playing. I'll just sit up here and keep listening. Boy, we are glad you are here in the house of the Lord today. I want to just ask that you would bow your heads with me as we look to the Lord this morning, shall we? Heavenly Father, we are here today with thanksgiving in our hearts that we are able to come and sing praises to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, there are many here today, Lord, that are broken. And I pray, Lord, that you would, that they would feel you around them, that you would surround them in a way that they can feel you right there with them. Lord, today we come here to hear from your word, to be challenged from your word, to allow it to penetrate and pierce our hearts, that we would become more Christ-like in our everyday walk with you. Lord, I pray that today we didn't come here because we are religious, but rather because we have a relationship with you. Lord, that we would come to be more equipped to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we are here today to be convicted by your word that we would be changed. Lord, today may this day, may this service be all about you. May the distractions of life be put aside. And may we focus on you and what you've done for us. We ask all of this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Terry is going to come and lead us in song. All right, Terry. It is a great day, is it not? Look at the sun. How many of you guys got any thunder the other night? (laughs) I have never... It's been a long time since I've heard that much thunder. Terry? That thunder was, it, you know, that, that there's type of thunder you can go out there and just sit on the porch and just watch it. Unfortunately, my dog would be on my lap shivering like a little scared goat. But if you would please stand, 498, 498. <clears throat> This is one of the days that we're going to be waiting for, folks. I would say pack your bags, but you don't need anything.
yeah, you know, I, I love, you guys, I get, I get to do this. I get so excited and tongue-tied. But, you know, when we, when we all sing, the prettiest voices, I'm sorry, guys, the prettiest voices are from the women. <clears throat> uh, it, you should be. <laughs> but have just a lady sing on the, on the third verse. And don't worry, guys, you're not going to have to sing by yourselves. <laughs> if we could. <clears throat> Let us As you get a little older, that day looks better all the time. It's amazing. Well, I have a few announcements, but first of all, uh, we're going. I want to say thank you to everybody that showed up for the men's skeet shoot. Uh, we're going to play just a quick video. Uh, we we left it with a boom. Okay, so if John, if you'll play that real quick. It was a lot of fun. It really was. I don't know how many shells we wasted, <laughs> but I have good news for the ducks. If we were duck hunting, they would be safe. <laughs> Unless Dave was shooting. Dave, you better raise your hand. Dave was the winner of, right up here in the front. Raise it higher, higher. He was the winner of the skeet shoot. So... It, was, it really was a blast, no, ton, no pun intended. It was just a great time, so thank you to all the men that came out for that. All right, uh, tomorrow, looking ahead, there will be a ladies' meeting at 6 p.m. to discuss the upcoming ladies' tea. All are invited to come. That's tomorrow, 6 o'clock, right here. September 4th, how many of you remember John and Kate Denner? Anybody? They will be here in concert on September 4th at 6 o'clock. So John is the guy that can play the piano faster than anybody, anybody I've ever seen. I didn't know your fingers could move that fast. He just really, really goes, and so we want to invite you to that. Um, you will be blessed uh, dramatically. September 12th, small group pilots uh, will begin. Um, if you are interested, there is some information in the back, but if you are interested in, in joining a small group, okay, Please come and talk to me. I need to know. Please, please, please come and talk to me, okay? Um, this is a pilot program, but we want to see this successful. And so if that's something you're interested in, please talk to me. And then September 12th uh, will be a board meeting right after the morning service. All right. There are these pieces of paper in the back. It says, Hometown Heroes. We want to recognize our hometown heroes, um, those are firefighters, EMTs, police officers, and dispatch members. Um, and we want to do that on September 12th, the day after 9-11. And so if you know somebody, 
um, that is an EMT, or you say, hey, you know what, I want to drop this off at the fire department. There are a bunch of these in the back, but we want to honor them. Uh, we will have a gift for them, and so if you could just help pass that word along, we would greatly appreciate it. All right. Operation Christmas Child Box Ideas, don't forget that. The school supplies for this week, or for this month. So, did I miss anything? All right. Fantastic. Well, if the men would come forward for the offering. How many of uh, the men that shot yesterday's shoulders hurt? One, two, three, okay, four of us. Five, we got five. One more just came in. I tell you what, that was a great time. Nothing better than getting together guns, food, and fellowship. It was fantastic. It really, really was, so. All right. Men are coming forward. My son wore a suit this morning. I said, what are you wearing a suit? What, what's going on? He said, I'm doing an offering today, Dad. He looks sharp. Takes after his dad. <laughs> Except the hair. All right. Hey, Al. Al, would you pray for the offering, please, brother? favorite song so it's not dramatic it's not anything exciting except one thing think about the Bible think about that <clears throat> there's a path Bible on the table. It's pages torn and hard to read. But the family Bible on the table will ever be my key to memory at the close of day 
when work was over and when the evening meal was done dad would read to us from the bible and would count our many blessings one by one i can see setting round the table when from the family Bible dad would read I can hear my mother softly singing rock of ages rock of ages cleft for me this old world of ours is full of trouble if we find more bet that's that one <clears throat> if we find more bibles on the table and mother singing rock of age for me i can see us sitting round the table when from the family bible dad would read i can hear my mother softly singing rock of ages rock of ages left for me man thank you brother all right if the praise team would come forward if you'd all stand When we're singing, I shut myself off. Turn with me, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 17. Today I want to talk to you about something that's actually been on my heart and it's been, been very in my face this week. And it is, it is this. We as a church, universal... We as individuals, we as church local, I believe we have a heart problem. I believe we have a heart problem. The real problem that we face today in this world is a problem in the hearts of God's people. You say, no, 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 I watch the news, it's, 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 it's the Muslims, it's this group of people, it's that group of people, it's, it's not us, but I want to tell you something, it is us. Yep. And the reason I say that is because we know better. Right. The church, and as a believer in Jesus Christ, that would be you. That would be me as a heart problem. And that heart problem has gotten so big that we've lost focus of what really matters. We have lost focus 
of what Christ has called us to do. If I told you there were a lot of problems in the world, you wouldn't look at me and say, really? I wouldn't be telling you something that you didn't know. But when it comes right down to the lowest common denominator... And if we're willing to accept the word of God as truth, it's a problem with God's people. I'm going to tell you something. This is not a popular sermon to preach. How many people like to hear that they have a problem? Nope. We don't. Billy Graham once said this. He said, the problem isn't the amount of Christians that we have. We don't need any more Christians. What we need is more committed Christians because that would take care of the problem of more Christians. Because people would be able to see the way that we act. They would be able to see Christ through us and that would lead people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But we have lost our vision. And I want to tell you this, it's such a problem that the only thing that could bring relief, either individually, corporately, is a sin-killing revival in our country and in our church. I believe that wholeheartedly. We got a problem with the heart. Stop and think about it for just a second. Isn't the heart something that is so very unique? That is something that is so God created that man really can't replicate it. How many of you guys have a a vehicle? How many of you, if you went to the dealership and they said, you know what, I have a, a vehicle and I guarantee you that all the running parts of it could last up to 100 years. You'd say, could? Well, we have proof that many of them have. You you would say, wow, that's pretty impressive. God made a heart to pump how many times a minute? How many minutes in an hour? How many hours in a day? How many days in a month? How many months in a year? And yet, it still pumps. I have good news for you. Yours is still pumping. It's still pumping. God made it so unique. But yet man has made it so flawed. The Bible tells us that the heart is what? Deceitfully wicked. We have been led astray, but I want to tell you, we need a sin-killing revival where the people of God lose their lukewarmness and get back to something that's so important, and that is this holiness we have been taught over the last few generations not by there's been many great preachers but by the world and by a lot of preachers that we do not need to be separate from the world as christians that's false and i want to tell you when you hear somebody say that tell them that is false Our lives should be separate from that of the world. We should not live as the world. We should live as children of Almighty God. We, as a church, as a country, as a state, whatever you want to say, have a heart problem. So when you talk about our problem... Sin is the problem. You might say that the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Jeremiah talks about it. Turn there with me if you would. I know I told you that. Chapter 17, we're going to read 11 verses. Would you stand with me as you're able? If you can't, no worries. I would never call you out. I just want to read this portion of Scripture. It says, the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point 
of a diamond. It is graven upon the tables of their heart and upon the horns of their altar. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasure to the spoil and the high places for sin throughout all the borders. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage, and I give thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the years of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing, as the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not. So he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of the days, and at his end shall be what? A fool. Let us pray, shall we? Father. Give us discerning hearts today. Help us to see where you want us to be in our life and in our walk with you. Lord, as we examine our own heart, Lord, may you make it very clear as to where we're at and where we need to go to be in a right relationship with you. Lord, I pray that today we would be uncomfortable in this place because of what your word says, that it would change our thinking that it would challenge us in our thinking, and that, Lord, we would be molded more into the image and likeness of your Son because of your word, and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. It's my prayer today that you identify your spiritual condition as we're going to consider four hearts that I believe were described here. Four hearts. Now, I want to ask you this. First of all, to have the heart of God, what do you have to know? You got to know God, right? And I want to give you that opportunity right now before we go any further. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. I want to make sure that everybody in here has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That you have given your life, you've surrendered your life to him, said, Lord, this is no longer me. I'm trusting in you to get me to heaven because of what you did on the cross of Calvary. I believe that and I surrender my life to you. Do with it what you wish. If there's somebody here that doesn't know for certain that when they leave here that they're bound for heaven, today is the day. Okay, for those of us that do know Jesus Christ, I want to look at four hearts. Four hearts that I believe Jeremiah describes here. And I want to tell you something. Some of them aren't real exciting. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe that it outlines our country. It outlines the local church, I'm not saying this church, I believe it outlines the universal church very, very precisely. I gotta tell you, this convicted me because I have been somebody who has been so involved in everything else that I, a lot of times it's easy to lose focus of what really matters. Anybody else find that? And so as I was, was preparing this message, it really, really really hit me. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. I want to read verses 1 through 4 as we go through this first heart. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. 
It is graven upon the tables of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst the children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills? O my mountain in the field, I will give thee thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and the high places for sin throughout all the borders. I believe that the heart that Jeremiah here is describing is a divided heart. And I want to tell you, I believe that a lot of Christians, probably most, would fit into this idea of a divided heart. When I said that we need to be separate as believers in Jesus Christ, it means that we can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Okay? That is called lukewarm, and the Bible describes to us in that, that that might as well be what? Cold. How many of you... uh, in the wintertime, like to hop into a cold bathtub. Some of you guys are weird and in the summer actually do that. I know somebody that told me, I like to take a cold shower. I'm like, I should pray for you. (laughs) What's wrong with you? But I believe that we as a church, even as a church, definitely as a nation, are divided. And Jeremiah specifically deals with this In these four verses, he says the very first heart that we see here is a divided heart. This is the conditions, I believe, of most of the Christians in this world at the present time. Jeremiah kept telling the people of Judah that God's judgment was coming, but the people just would not listen. I want to ask you this. Do you know what God's word says? But yet do we always Always follow it. It is so easy in a world of technology today to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. It is so easy to be wrapped up in things rather than things of God. It is so easy to focus on money rather than what God will do with it. The world teaches us, you got to save for retirement, and God says... Keep going. A man by the name of John Miles, I think he was 86 years old. He wore those little plastic boots. About that tall. Everybody know which ones I'm talking about? They're foam, black. 86 years old. I remember him very clearly. Walk into theology class. Said, Mr. Miles, need help? No, sir. In our conversation, he said, Pastor, well, he didn't say Pastor, he said, Caleb, he said, There's one way that I want to die. I said, Okay, what is that? He said, With my work boots on for Jesus Christ. You think he was considering retirement? He died on a Monday. Do you know what he did on Sunday? He went to the nursing home and preached. He went to the nursing home and preached because he loved God and he loved his word. I want to ask you this. Do you have a divided heart? One that wants to keep your foot in the world and one that wants to keep your foot in the church or for the things of God? I want to ask you, what is your heart like? How many of you find that the world's pull is very, 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 very strong? Anybody? Keep your hand up. Well, let's do this. Say amen. Amen. Okay. That way we don't have anybody looking at their spouse going. God said that they had written their sin in such a way that it wasn't going to be erased. Do you see in verse 1 it says, The sin of Judah was written with a pen of iron. In the point of a what? This was engraved on their hearts. I want to ask you, what is engraved on your heart? Are you divided, wanting to serve the world and to serve God? Or are you saying, you know what? The world has nothing to offer me. God has everything. 
Jeremiah kept preaching and they kept not listening. And as a matter of fact, if you come to chapter 26, the people became very tired of Jeremiah's preaching. Does that sound familiar? The world does not want to hear the truth of God's word right now, do they not? They want to dismiss it as your thoughts and ideas. Do you know what I look at it as? An inerrant word from Almighty God. It's called truth. And it's the one truth in the world today. Verse 4 says this in so many words. I'm not going to bless your sinful living. And I want to tell you something. God's not going to do that today. No matter what the world teaches you, if it does not align with God's word, do you know what it is? Sin. It's false. How many of you have noticed that the center line of God's word, according to the world, has changed? I like seeing that hand. How many of you guys remember in 1990? A Disney movie came out and it had one cuss word in it and it was rated G. And they said, what in the world is going on? We've never had that before. Do you know how many cuss words are in Disney movies today that are still G? I don't even know if you could count them. You see, God's word never changes, but the world's view does. The things that the world says can be okay if they don't line up with God's word, are not okay. I had a man come to me one time and he said, Pastor, I want to be a deacon. And I wasn't actually at this church. It was at a different church. And I said, oh yeah? He said, but I struggle with pot. Okay. Interesting. He said, my dad said it's okay because it's going to be legal shortly. Oh, I said, well, hey, I tell you what, pornography is legal too. You looked at me really funny. I said, do you understand? We don't base it off what the world allows. We base our spirituality off of what the word of God says. He doesn't talk to me very often. But I want to tell you something. I think he understood truth. I want to ask you this. Do you have a divided heart? One for the world and one foot in for Christ. If you were honest, if we were honest, I bet most of our hands would go up when we said that. If I said, how many of you guys are divided for this this world yet are divided to serve Christ? a lot of our hands would go up. I believe that's where most of the Christians are today. They're trying to find balance because they know what God's word says, but it's hard to live it out. Go to verse five with me if you would. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in what? Man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord, for he shall be like a heath or a bush in the desert, and shall not see when God cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. The second heart is the departed heart. Now, I want to tell you something. I believe that a departed heart is different than a divided heart. This is a heart that really doesn't want anything to do with God's word, even though they know it's true. How many of you have ever seen people like that? You can tell them truth, and they'll say, yep, I know. I got it. Yet they do the exact opposite. Can I tell you something? As a pastor, there's nothing more annoying than doing a counseling session saying, this is exactly what you have to do. Go ahead. This is, this is what you have to do, and this will be the result. And then they come back to you and they say, uh, well, things are different. Well, what, why? Well, I didn't do what you said. Well, why did I counsel you? Why does God give us counsel? So that we will do it. A departed heart is somebody that is actually says, yes, I know what it says, but I'm not willing to do it. I want to ask you this question. Is that you? Is that you? Do you know God's word yet don't do it? You say, pastor, come on. 
I came to church to be uplifted. Don't worry, it's coming. I won't leave you hanging. The difference between a departed heart and a divided heart is that the person with the departed heart has completely turned his back on the correcting voice of God that comes through the preaching of God's word and the wooing of God's spirit. Many of the people were Judah in that very condition. Verse five, look at verse five real quick with me. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth the man and maketh flesh his arms and whose heart departed from the Lord. I'm gonna tell you, the world trusts a lot in men, to, men or women today. How many of you guys noticed that? Oprah said, who cares what Oprah said? Seriously? Well, Stephen A. from ESPN says, I don't care what Stephen A. says. We put so much trust in people. Actually, we put so much trust in people that when a pastor a lot of times leaves, do you know what happens to the church? It dies. Because they were coming for the wrong reasons. I tell you what, if you're coming here for me, you're going to be gravely disappointed. I, I promise you that. I, I'm, I'm good at disappointing. Actually, I think I've perfected it. But you know what? When our focus is Christ, when the reason that we come is to serve Almighty God, to understand that we are here to serve Him, and we don't care what people are thinking, as long as we're in alliance with God's Word, we have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. I had a, a man one time tell me, he said, but what if people look at me funny? Welcome to my world. Who cares? As long as we're in alliance with God's word. As long as we're in alliance with God's word. We see the divided heart. We see the departed heart. Verse 7 and 8, blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by waters that spreadeth their roots out by the river and shall not see the, see the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding its fruit. This is the good news. We've looked at two bad hearts but this one is a devoted heart. I believe actually that this portion of scripture, you can go back, turn with me if you would real quick to Psalm 1. This is a, a, another illustration of a tree that's planted by waters. This is the devoted heart. Somebody that wants to dig in deep and plant their roots in the word of God so that their heart is right before God. So that they, when the world says this is okay, you know what they say? No. No, it's not. Psalm 1. Very interesting psalm. I've preached on it many times. It says this, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You see, in order to have a devoted heart, those are the things that we have to do. We need to walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Verse two, but his delight. What is his delight in? The law of the Lord, which is the word of God. I want to tell you something. 99% of problems when people come to me is because they do not spend time in the word of God. People come for marriage counseling and say, Pastor, my marriage is not working. What's your relationship with Jesus Christ? Like, when's the last time you opened his word? Well, we struggle in that situation. Well, would you like your marriage to get better? Look at how God outlines it. Well, pastor, I'm struggling in this position in my life, and, and I'm just, man, these people are really, really upsetting me. When's the last time you dug into God's word? Well, now, let me tell you this. Do some people struggle even though they're in God's word? Absolutely. There are still things that I struggle with. 
I have come to a conclusion that if people would just think like me, that would go away. People don't always see politics the way I see them. Let me ask you this. Whose hope? Where do people put their hope who have a devoted heart? In the Lord. They trust in the Lord. If God's word says it, as far as they're concerned, that's the way it is. I think of Terry. Is Terry in here? The doctor said, "Uh uh-oh, you're in trouble. You know what Terry said? I serve the great physician. You have no power over any of that. My God does. Terry had a devoted heart. I, I gotta be honest. I almost said, Terry, take it easy. He said, I'm a winner either way, pastor. If I die, I'm going to heaven. He said, if I stay here, I get to be with Georgie. I said, you're not excited to stay with me? He said, well... He didn't answer it. And you know, those types of people, the devoted people, do you know what the Bible calls them? Blessed. Verse 8, For they shall be as a tree planted by waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. When the hard times come, the tree that's got its roots in the right place, don't worry about the drought. Do you know why? Because its roots are in the right place. How many of you guys watch the news and see all these wildfires going on? And you think, oh man, and everybody, it's a drought. Fires are going to happen. Can you imagine saying, it is what it is. God's in control. This tree has its roots in the right place. And when the drought comes, guess what it still does? Bears its fruit. I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters. We're in a drought. We're in a drought, and I see that a lot of people right now are fearing in a lot of different ways. They fear for this COVID stuff. They fear for our country. They fear for other countries. But do you know when we as believers should shine and bear fruit? Even in the drought. Even when things are tough. Even when we don't know what to say, God says, guess what? Trust me. I want to ask you this. Do you have a devoted heart? What's your heart like? Is it a divided heart? Is it a departed heart? Is it a devoted heart? I love the imagery that God, or that God uses here. I'm going to look at the third or the fourth and final one. Look at verse 9 through 11. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord searched the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of the days and his end shall be a fool. I want to tell you this. The last heart is a deceitful heart. It's a deceitful heart. The worst thing about a deceitful heart is that it will deceive you. It will tell you you're okay when you're not. Verse 11 tells us that the person who decides to direct his life in some other way besides God can fill that all things that he thought to be so important will be like a mirage in the desert And in the end, he will be like a fool. I want to just ask you this. As you're sitting here today, it is hot in here. It's very hot. I'm actually sweating. I just want you to to just think about this. What kind of a heart do you have? Is it a divided heart? Is it a departed heart? 
Is it a devoted heart or is it a deceitful heart? Maybe it's kind of a mixture of two or three. But I want to ask you this. What kind of a heart do you want? Do you want a divided heart? A departed heart? A deceitful heart? Or do you want a devoted heart to God? I'm going to ask right now that you would just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment. And I'm going to give you just a second for you to evaluate your own heart. If people were to look at you today and say, wow, this is their heart, what would they say? What would God say about your heart? Would he say they're divided? They're more concerned about the things of this world. You know what? They want to take everything they can and see what, what they can come up with. Boy, they're deceitful. They're saying they're okay, but they're really not. Or maybe you're the one that says, you know what, I know what God's word says, but I'm not going to go that way because of what other people might think of me. I want to tell you something. God wants a devoted heart. God wants a devoted heart. He wants your heart to be set apart for him so that when people see it, they would say, guess what? They're separate from the world. They have something. That something is Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you can say, Pastor, three of the negative ones that you talked about, three of the negative hearts, one of them might describe my heart right now. Pastor, I'm asking that you would pray for me so that I would be a devoted heart. Would you just slip your hand up? I see your hands. Thank you for your honesty. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. If that's you and you want to come up here to our altar, I'll invite you up. Never call you out, but I see your hands and God wants us to be devoted to him. Yeah, please come forward. If that's you, come forward. You don't have to come forward, but I'm just asking that you would sit right in your seat right now if that's you and say, Lord, change me. I cry out, change me, Lord. If I could have a couple people just come up and pray with them real quick. Lord, change my heart. I got a problem, Lord. I got a heart problem. Lord, just change my heart. Help me to be devoted to you. Lord, I want to be used. I want you to do great things. Lord, help it to start with me. So many of us know the truth, but yet fall with the world. Lord, change me. Lord, change me. I'm going to pray and you'll be dismissed. Could you do me a favor? On your way home, would you have a conversation with whoever you rode with? And if you didn't ride with anybody, call somebody. May it spur spiritual thinking. Lord, I want my heart right with you. Whatever it is that's holding me back, Lord, I'm laying it at your feet. I'm giving it to you. Use me. Turn me into a devoted, devoted Christian that others would see Christ in me. Lord, as we leave here today, may the world see Christ in us. May we be a living example of the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power that it has. Thank you, Lord, that even though maybe right now we're not that devoted heart, that you can change it, that you can mold it and make it into what you would have it to be. Lord, do that 
within us today. That's our prayer. And for those that raise their hands, Lord, do that in them as well. Lord, we want to be a Christian that is not lukewarm as considered cold, but a Christian that is hot for you. Telling others, showing others with our love and our life the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask all of this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I always say it and I will always continue to say it. You've been to church. That's this building. Now go and be the church. God bless. Have a great day. We'll be back here at 6 o'clock tonight. We'd love to have you.